Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about serving static files. That's stuff like images, videos, external style sheets, also known as CSS, and external JavaScript files. Now to do this, we have to take a look at the difference between our local development environment of Django and our production level environment of Django. Now we're not gonna be worrying about production just yet. Instead, we're gonna worry about local. But we notice that these styles look vastly different, right? And that of course is because the production environment does not have static files set up. But the other thing is when I'm in a local and I change debug to being zero, and then I restart my server, the static files should go away as well. But unfortunately, when I'm refreshing on this page, it's not going away. They still seem to be there. So if I go to view developer and JavaScript console, and I open this up a bit and navigate over to network and hit disable cache, make sure that's toggled and then refresh. Now it's gone, right? So now the styles are more aligned with what we see on the production environment. And that of course is because when you're in debug mode, Django will serve static files. When you're not in debug mode, Django will not serve static files. What I mean by serving static files is, I mean, Django has built-in methods to, instead of returning HTML here, it will actually return a different kind of file, like a CSS file or an image file. And technically speaking, you can do that. But Django mentions that serving static files through Django is not recommended, it is inefficient, and probably very insecure. Now that's in, of course for production. And we'll talk about that in a lot more detail once we go into production in the next one. But for now, let's go ahead and see how I can use my own static files. And a good example of this would be in base.html. We have all of these HTMX related style sheets, right? Or styles, right? So these are internally written on the HTML itself. So this is an internal style sheet right here. We wanna convert it into an external style sheet. Now, right above that is the actual HTMX JavaScript external file that's hosted on another server, right? So Django itself, we do not want them to host this in the long run. We want it to be hosted on an external server, but we can still host it in the short run. So to do that, or at least in the development environment, I should say. Uh, so inside of recipes, we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder in here and we're gonna call it static. So again, we're handling static files. So very similar to like templates, this folder needs to be called static. That's the same for all of your apps and Django is gonna look in your apps first for these static files. And so inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and create recipes just like we did with templates. I'm gonna make a folder specifically for this app itself. So inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and make my recipes-htmx CSS, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste these styles in here, or really cut them out and paste them in here and get rid of them in base.html. Now, in order for this to work, I'm gonna go ahead and also change one more thing and say body and just do color being red and important. Okay, so the only reason I'm doing that is to visually see the changes immediately, not anything that we need to do long term. So I will remove it in some point. Okay, so now I want to actually, you know, reference those CSS files. Okay, so let's think about where they are. They're in static recipes and then recipes-htmx.css. So your intuition might be link real style sheet, href being static recipes and recipes-htmx.css. Now, it's okay if your intuition was not that, but if you've used Nginx, for example, you might actually have this intuition to some degree. Maybe not, but the idea here is this static folder holds a, another folder called recipes, which explains these two, and then finally the file right there. So we're gonna go ahead and save that, and let's restart our server. And let's make sure we're still in, or actually in debug mode too. Let's turn that back into a one, restart the server again. And let's take a look at our project. So going into the root, hey, what do you know? It's actually loading my static files. That's great. The reason I know it's loading is because all of this is red. But also if I were to navigate to this file itself, which is what we'll do going forward, we can now actually see the contents of that file from that actual location. 
Now, I knew for sure that this would load because of how Django is set up by default. But of course, if this folder up here was something different, let's say we'll rename it to static ABC, and I change this to static ABC, refresh in here, of course the page is not found. It's not actually finding it at all for several reasons. One of them being, hey, notice it doesn't give me static in here at all. So it's not even referencing this. The other one being that it's giving me only the relative path. And then the final reason, the real reason, has to do with our configuration. So going into try Django in settings.py, if we scroll to the very bottom, what you'll see is something for static URL. So by default, the static URL or where Django will serve our development static files is just slash static, right? So it's not static ABC. If I wanted it to be static ABC, I could change it and make it work that way. And then come back in here and go into static ABC and hit enter. And what do you know? It's still saying me page not found uh, for several reasons, which we don't have to get into really a whole lot here. Um, but the idea is it's actually changing where it's doing that lookup. Uh, so I don't want to do that right now. So let's re rename this back to static. And in our settings, let's rename that back to static. And then in base.html, well, we need to rename that as well, but it's going to be a little bit different. Now, the reason it's going to be different is because this is not sustainable. Because if you ever change the setting for this, then it's going to break your hard-coded you know, reference to that CSS, especially when we go into production. So instead, we want to do load static here. And in this case, now I'm going to go ahead and use the static template tag to reference our CSS just like that. So this, of course, is very similar, the static path right here is very similar to include. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the original static there and just do a relative path, much like when we saw this page not found thing. And so I can also render this out to see what it looks like, right? I don't have to have it in an element itself. So now if I go back into static, now it's actually loading. Of course, if I have to restart the server, just restart the server. Oftentimes you will when you do stuff with static files. And so um, let's go ahead and refresh in our homepage now. And yet again, it's still working. Now, another aspect when you are working with static files is you definitely want to make sure that this disable cache is on and that you have this toggled open. Otherwise, you might not see the changes propagate. Okay, cool. Uh, so now that we can actually see what the static tag is doing, this right here, we can now adjust, you know, something like static ABC like that and then refresh in this page and notice that it says static ABC and all of the other files related to it should still work correctly. Cool. So let's leave it in a static. Let's change our environment to being debug being zero. And let's rerun the server and take a look at the rendered files themselves. Let's make sure we're in static. Notice this is page not found. And of course, on my home page, also still saying page not found, although it's trying to render this out. Now, this is because of the debug mode. Django is not going to serve that at all. So I'm going to leave debug mode being to one so we can at least see those things. Now, when we go into production, if you want to see what the production static files are, there is a way to do that. We are just not going to do it yet. Um, and so the other part of this is where we actually store our static files long term. So one of the places you might want to store them is not inside the app, but rather in the main Django project itself, much like we did with templates. So going into uh, the root of our project, we're going to go ahead and add a folder called static. Now you can call this whatever you like. I like to call it static because it aligns with how it's named inside of the apps themselves, much like I did with templates. I think that's best practices. So inside of here, now we can go ahead and say recipes again. And then inside of there, we can do recipes dash htmx.css and hit enter. Okay, so in the original recipes.css, we had this body color in here. In the new one, in the this one right here, I'm going to remove that body color altogether. So it makes a change to the original in a slight difference, right? So now that we've got this change in my settings, what I want to do is add in one more setting in here, and it's called static files DIRS. So static files DIRS. 
And what this is gonna be is a path, a relative path to our base directory to the static folder. So base dir slash static. And of course, if you're using os.path, it's really similar. It's ospath.join and static just like that. Now this, notice that it is a list here. So you can actually have multiple places where your static files might exist on your system. It's very rare that I ever do that. It's usually more like this. Okay, cool. So we save that now. And what I wanna see here is a couple things. Number one, let's make sure we're still in debug mode and we're still referencing the same CSS. Okay, and then my settings are also saved. So let's go ahead and rerun the server here. And we'll refresh in here now. It appears that the static files are not loading again, right? So let's actually go and take a look at those static files again and hit enter. And what do you know? They are loading and they're using the other version, right? So the actual proper version, the one that's in here, right? That basically overwrites the version I had inside of the app. Now, this is useful for several reasons. The primary reason is using third-party Django apps, like apps just like this, like the app component itself that has models.py and whatnot. It actually will override that. So that actually gives me the uh, opportunity if I do use third-party apps and I do not like any of their styles or their JavaScript, I can override them using that static files DIRS folder just as long as it's using the exact same path. Now, this is also true for the admin itself. So if we go into the admin, we can actually take a look at the different style sheets that are coming in here, right? So base.html. So I can actually open this up and I can copy this, okay? So let's go ahead and do a little experiment here. We'll go into admin and I think it was base.css. Paste that in. Yep, base.css, okay? And so I'm not actually gonna modify this. In fact, I'll probably delete it after here. Uh, but what I'll do is I'm gonna add one style in here for body. And instead of this color item here, I'll just go ahead and say color, red, and important. Save that. And um, we can refresh in the admin itself. Looks like I need to restart the server again. Let's restart the server. And nope, I had the ordering wrong. This should be admin and then CSS as a folder and then drag that in there. Okay. And so now it has that color red. I refresh in here uh, and then let's open up this CSS tab itself and take a look at the color that I just added. And there it is. Okay, so just a simple and easy way to show you that you can also change the admin stuff. I'm not gonna do that, I just wanted to mention it. Uh, but of course you need to make sure your paths are correct. Uh, and a quick way to do that is by going into any given page and look where the style sheets are referenced. That's kind of the idea here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and move it to the trash. Okay, so now what I wanna do, the last part of this is really discussing what happens in production when you do it locally, essentially. So what happens a lot of times with production builds of the Django project is it'll run something called collect static. And when we went into production with the DigitalOcean app, right, we actually disabled this command using a environment variable. So if I hit collect static, it's gonna go ahead and try to collect my static files. Now this says improperly configured and it, we need to set up a static root folder. So this is actually what causes a problem in production, but it also causes a problem locally if we try to do that. So in other words, I wanna see what's gonna go into production. I wanna run this collect static so I can review all the files that are gonna be used in production. Now it's not often you're gonna review these files one by one, right? It's usually like, hey, I need to make sure that I run collect static so that those files are all available and ready for production. I'll, I'll explain what files I mean by that in just a moment. So let's go ahead back into our settings and do static root. And then we'll go ahead and create a new folder here. So I'm gonna use in my base directory, something like this, but instead of of course static, this folder we've been using, we wanna use, let's say static files dash CDN. Okay, so this is an arbitrary name here. And the reason I'm calling it CDN is because 
in production, we want a CDN, which is content delivery network. So locally, I'm gonna go ahead and call it this. And in my root folder, in the root of the project, of course, where based up, based there is, we're gonna go and add in this folder. And while I do that, since I'm using git to monitor these things, I'm also gonna add in that folder into my git ignore file. I do not want this folder in my git repo. I do not need it there, so it's not necessary to have it. Okay, so now I've got this base directory in here, this static root. Let's go ahead and run it. And now it actually copies it and it does several things here. So let me break this down and take a look at static file CDN. Notice the admin files are all in there, right? So this is emulating what would happen in production in your static files server. So if you were using something like Nginx, you could totally do this. Now, DigitalOcean app platform will actually handle our static files for us. We'll talk about that when we get there, or well, DigitalOcean service will do it. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But for now, we see all of the static files that our production server would end up using, including recipes-htmx.css. So now we see another case of where Django actually prefers what we set in our static files directories for our production files. That I think is pretty cool. And that's it for static files for now. Now we actually need to worry about getting this into production.